It's John Desmond. Call an ambulance. Take it easy, Mr. Desmond. A little late. I guess I had a tiger for the tail. And I couldn't let go. feeling like a premonition that nothing good would come out of this trip. When you feel that way, nothing good can happen to you. At least that's what they say. I was starting off on the wrong foot anyway. Worldwide News had assigned me to Paris, then they'd switched me in midair. I expected to see Macaulay, but he wasn't around. Where do I pick up my luggage? Just outside. Thanks. Mr. Desmond? I'm from the office. My name is Jane Claymore. Oh. How'd you recognize me? Mr. McCoy said you were tall and broad and... and made noises like an American. <laughs> I've got the car outside. Is this your first visit to England, Mr. Desmond? Yes. It seems strange to you after America. I suppose it will. New country, practically a different language. <laughs> of course, we drive on the wrong side of the road. Will Macaulay be at the office now? No, he asked me to take you along to the hotel. He'd be along to see you when you settled in. You've um, heard about the switch, of course. Yes, I'm assigned to the London branch. I suppose you're a little disappointed. Miss Claymore, you have a talent for understatement. That's a British characteristic, like the weather. But you'll get used to even that in time. Mm. Will you have tea, sir? No, thanks. Ring Mr. Desmond's room, will you please? Yes, sir. Say Mr. McCauley's in the lobby. Hello, Mac. Well, hello, Desmond. I am glad to see you. I apologize for not meeting you at the airport. My sincere apologies. I was relieved. <laughs> Same old Desmond, you were relieved. That's a good one. What's on your mind, Mac? How do you mean? Who's going to Paris, you? Unfortunately, yes. Don't want it? Well, you see, I've got a nice little apartment in New York I want to get back to. But world news says no. You can't write about the French point of view in New York. Uh, what am I supposed to write about? The British point of view. Oh. <clears throat> How come they made the switch? I wouldn't know, Desmond. You know what head office is. They do these things. And just tell you about it. <laughs> That's right. But don't let it worry you. You've got a nice little setup here in London. Quiet, no interference, roaming commission. Yes. <clears throat> well, I'd like to get you a drink, Desmond. But uh, you know what it's like. Friends to meet, last minute rush. Ah, uh, forget it. Jane will pick you up in the morning and show you around. Good kid, Jane. She'll be a power of help to you. Well, so long, Desmond. Take care of yourself. Oh, and if you um, feel like a trip to Paris sometime, be sure and let me know. So this is London. Brain, a hotel in Kensington, and a feeling of depression. There's no reply to your number. Hotel Rombra. Oh, no. A telephone, no one to call, except Jane. There's no reply for Mr. Gaynor's room. Would you get me Western 9700, please? Yes, sir. 
Western 9700, please. I don't know why I wanted to call her. She wasn't my type. I wasn't hers. At least that's what I thought at the time. I'm sorry, sir. There's no reply. Oh, thanks. If she'd been there, things might have been different. If. The big word. If this place had a liquor license, maybe I'd have stayed home. As it was, I just had to get myself a drink. I know love. Love isn't a song. Love isn't roses, roses all the way. Love is a thief. Love another name for grief. Love is a game with the devil to pay. I know love, love isn't a dance, finishing with a kiss, a warm embrace, though it may seem just an orchid scented dream, love is as real as a slap in the face. Scotch and water, please. Only heard when the music plays Adagio. Loves the laughter in the flat below. I've had my share of love and I know. Mind if I sit here, or are you uh, expecting a friend? I'm not expecting anyone. If it's true love, it's worse. And I know, darn it. How'd you guess? Oh, Americans abroad are unmistakable. They have the assurance that comes from only one thing, money. Not this American. But you're still able to travel? Well, I'm a newspaper man. I'm here on an assignment. I'm supposed to roam around, ask questions, and put down the answers as I see them. Salary plus expenses and my byline around the country. Your byline? My name, John Desmond. Mine is Anna Ray. Nice name. Different. You must be very clever. It's important work interpreting one great country to another. It can be kind of lonesome. Two lonely people? You lonely? Don't believe it. I'd like to dance. Do you mind? So. It was like meeting a stranger on a boat. I thought I might as well enjoy the trip while it lasted. She had a nice figure and a cute line. I like people born between May and June. Gemini types? That's right. That's me. I get along fine with people born between October 1st and 3rd. Uh, I don't qualify. Oh, well, there's always the exception. I think we'll get along anyway. I wonder if you're clever enough to make a bargain. You have your work, I have mine. About work. No questions. No? No. Mm-hmm. Brandy? No, thanks. I think I'll stick with scotch. Mm -hmm. I felt like a puzzled expert circling around a new type bomb. I sensed delayed action in this one. Straight? Please. Thank you.
I wondered about the bargain and the questions I wasn't supposed to ask. Skull. Skull. It's getting late. Do you mind? Yes, very late. Good night, Anna. Worldwide News. Thanks, Tom. Selling down nicely. You what? Paris. Oh, Paris. <laughs> no, forget it. London suits me fine. Here sure, I've started. Oh, don't, forget the British point of view. don't forget what? The British point of view. Oh, the British point of view. No, I won't. I'm working on it now. I've got to have it for Sunday, no later. Yeah, for Sunday, sure. Yeah, but I want really hot to big. Well, say hello to the boys for me, will you? <laughs> you bet I will. So long, Tom. Well, well. What do you mean by well, well? Next time you decide to stop out, do you mind letting me know? Oh, I, uh, I met an old friend. Mr. Desmond, it's no concern of mine who you met. I'd just like to know where to find you. Okay. Thank you. I'll show you to your office. Oh, very nice. Anyone else telephone? Oh, several. And Miss Proctor of the English Speaking League would like you to give a short speech to the members tomorrow afternoon. I put you down for three. Three speeches? Three o'clock. Oh. But um, I have an appointment tomorrow Mr. afternoon Ford at three. Of the o'clock. London you... Transport Welfare Society is coming to see you in the morning at ten. You should be through with him by ten thirty. At eleven thirty, I've arranged for you to meet Lord Chandley, the president of the Biological Society. He's very deaf, so he should take you through for lunchtime. At two now o'clock. Now wait just a minute. Yes. Am I not to be consulted about whom I see? Well, certainly, if you're here. Oh. I should give you a copy for your article on the British point of view. Thank you. Meeting various representative groups of the British public. That's what you want, isn't it? Well, yes, of course. Well, if you'd but... rather do it yourself, I mean... Oh, go right ahead. You're doing fine. Yes? Who wants them, please? Just a moment. Do you wish to speak to a Miss Ray? Miss Ray? Uh, yes, I'll talk to her. Hello? Yeah, this is John. For lunch? Uh, uh, just a moment. Miss Claymore, I've been invited to luncheon by the Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Newspaper Men. Am I free to accept? Oh, quite. Thank you. Yeah, honey, I'll be there. I was always there when she wanted me. Life was a game to Anna, and she played it ruthlessly. And me, I was just part of the game. There was no escaping her. She was like a drug, beautiful, and sometimes hateful. You're very restless tonight, darling. What's the matter? I was just thinking. Please don't think. You'll spoil everything. The only time I ever see you is when you find it convenient. You never want to be seen in the same place twice as if someone might surprise us together. What do you do? Where do you go when you're not with me? I said no questions. I don't ask about your life. Don't pry into mine. All right. That's the way you want it.
I hated every moment I couldn't spend in her company. I hated the thought of someone else. What are you doing this afternoon? I've got an appointment and I'm going in the wrong direction. Well, you want me to come with you? No, darling. Oh, now look, Anna. Remember what I told you? Okay. Phone me tonight, hmm? Hello, my love. All right? Yes. I didn't feel very proud of myself. No one likes to be caught peeking. I made up my mind to try and forget Anna and go back to work. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Any messages? Since when? Well, since... Since the day before yesterday. Oh, hundreds. They've all been taken care of. But don't you think that... Yes. Miss Claymore, how about my appointments? They've been taken care of. By whom? Me. The paper you're looking at contains my notes. What are you doing for dinner tonight? You ask me to have dinner with you? Why not? Well, I can't think why. What's happened to the uh, Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Newspaper Men? Do we have to go into that? I think we'd better change the subject altogether. You have exactly 12 hours in which to get your next article out. Shall we start? Oh. Yes, I guess so. Uh, you know a cafe called The Melody? Yes, I've heard of it. We have wonderful steaks. Mm, I know. Aren't they delicious? Trying to make her jealous? Worldwide news? Who is it? Just a moment, please. The Society. Hello? You followed me this afternoon. Don't ever call me or try to see me again. I won't be here. I'm going away. Going away? For how long? I'm not coming back. Hello? Hello, Anna. Are you ready for me now? No, I'm sorry. I've got to go out. I'll be back. Which day? I mean, later, about 5 o'clock. I telephoned Anna three or four times. I had to see her. I had to talk to her. you want. Mind if I have a drink? Maybe you'll join me. No? Why'd you come here? Just a social call. I wouldn't dream of letting you go without a final farewell to a beautiful friendship. What did you mean by your telegram? Nothing at all. I just want to see you again. I have an appointment to keep. If you have anything to say, please say it now. Well, I thought I had a lot to say, but I... I guess you wouldn't be interested, so go ahead and keep your appointment. Hey, a diary, what do you know? Give that to me. Not till I've seen what you've written about me. Now, give me that back. Well, 
Sure you didn't forget to load it? Give me that back or I'll kill you. Don't be foolish. Put it away. Anna, please. been trying to find you. What do you want? Your article for Sunday. It's a little late for that. I'm not very good company. Well, it's not your company I'm worried about. It's the article. Look, do me a favor. Just leave me alone. Are you ill? No. Wouldn't you like me to drive you back to the hotel? They're closing up now, sir. Society let you down? Sorry. What made you look for me there? A hunch. Now, can we talk about that article? I have a wonderful. Turn around this corner now. You're in trouble. Why do you say that? I recognize the symptoms. Look, drive back to the office and I'll tell you. I've got to talk to somebody. But if it was an accident, why didn't you go to the police? They wouldn't believe me. Do you think I should? Jane, I swear to you, every word I say... Well, there you are. What are you waiting for? Evening, miss. Good evening. Is your call number XY4946? Yes. Would you mind popping downstairs and putting the lights on? Oh, uh, I'll do that right away, officer. Thank you. I won't be long.
brought the diary back with me. Most of the entries are in cipher, very little longhand. Anything about you in it? No. <laughs> Funny. She was so anxious to get it back. It wasn't like she was mad just because I was peeking. She, she just had to get it back, like it was a question of life or... May I see it? Do you know anything about her friends? Nothing. Did anyone see you leave the apartment? I don't think so. Shall I keep this? Yeah, lock it up someplace, will you? you still think I ought to go to the police? Well, it's a little late now. Do you believe me? Yes, I do. Nothing in the papers. Maybe days before they find her. No, a maid usually goes in to clean up. What time? About 10 o'clock. Telegram for Desmond. In the head office. Your copy arriving late. Report reason for this. Somehow, the British point of view doesn't seem so important anymore. Still, I... What is it? Just remembered. I sent Anne a telegram last night before I went over. You mean... You mean it may be there now? I didn't see it around, but I guess it must be. I'll have to go back. But that's crazy. I've got to look for that telegram. But you'll be seeing it. I'll have to chance it. They can trace it right back to me. If I leave now, maybe I can get there before the maid goes in. Do you have a key to the flat? No, but I'll figure something. Look, stay right here. I'll phone you in. Don't worry. Come along, Come along. Kitty, kitty, come along. That's my baby. There we go. Yeah, I can't get in. Only come to read the meter, haven't you? That's all. Shall be off, Jiffy. How are you keeping down? Oh, not so bad. There you are. Help yourself. How about a cup of tea, love? Charlie, I can't. Go on. You've done it before. I never did. Yes, you have. Go on. Get the kettle on. Tea. That's all you men ever think about. Desmond? Yes? Would you come along with me, please? Where are you taking me? You'll know when we get there. Take it easy, Harry. We don't want to get picked up for speeding now, do we? <laughs> 
Hey, wait a minute. You fellas aren't the police. So. Sleep tight, baby. Wait here. Fitzgerald, welcome back. Thank you, Miss Finch. Is he in? Yes, he's expecting you. Oh, Foster. Here I am. Can I just say none too welcome? I didn't say a word. Are you still fiddling with this outmoded stuff? I prefer aeroplanes myself. Well, how was New York? Pretty good. I lunched with the committee yesterday. Why are you back? The committee promised that I should take over your duties. My dear Foster. Anna Ray dead, her contact list stolen, and the killer still at large. Hardly the moment to press your claims, my boy. Anna Ray was the committee's own agent, not mine. I refuse to be held responsible for her stupidity. Before we discuss her stupidity or your own ambitions, we want to get hold of that contact list. The contact list was incurred. Without the key, not even an expert could break it. Of course. Unfortunately, unbreakable codes have a distressing habit of getting broken. Have you turned up any clue uh, as to the murderer? Yes, a telegram I traced to John Desmond. He's an American journalist on Worldwide News. That's so. Treasury agent? Possibly. He killed Anna with her own gun. I, uh, I had her removed. We don't want the police in at this stage. But still no trace of the contact list yet. No, not yet. This Desmond must be a clever chap. Please. What are we going to do about him? I always work out my own plan of operations, you know that. Under my supervision. I go away and what happens? Now, are we going to discuss this amicably, or must I report to the committee that you refuse to cooperate? Hello? Yes, good. Good, I'll, uh... Yes, I'll come along right away. Fine. They've got Desmond at the house. I'll be over later. You stick to dialogue, my friend. Leave the action to me. Feeling better, Mr. Desmond? What is all this? Who are you? I give you a tip. If Mr. Foster wants to know something, tell him the truth. <laughs> if you want to stay home. Who's Foster? He wants to see you now. This way. Downstairs. Would you like another lump on the head? Okay, inside. who you think I am, but my name's Desmond. And you're an American citizen. Please sit down, Mr. Desmond. Now, answer my questions truthfully. Don't try to lie. It uh, won't do you any good. Who ordered you to kill Anna Ray? I don't know what you're talking about. 
Have you ever seen that telegram before? No, I haven't. You killed Anna Ray with her own gun, didn't you? Who ordered you to kill her? I didn't kill anyone. Who ordered you to kill her? Why did you kill Anna Ray? Why? Quite ready, we'll hear your story. Okay, I admit I was in her apartment the night she died, but I didn't kill her. Go on. It was an accident. I suppose she tried to kill you. That's right. Oh, really, Mr. Desmond, please leave the bad fiction of your newspapers. Why did you send that telegram? Look, I sent the wire because I thought she was leaving me. What happened when you got to the apartment? Well, when I, when I got there, I heard, heard voices on the inside. Man, laughing. I guess I went a little crazy. I, I shot the lock off the door and... But it was Anna's gun. How did you manage to come by that? I found it in her desk one day after we'd had a row. I figured the gun would be safer with me. Yes? Well, if I'd caught her with anybody, I, I admit I might have killed them both, but instead I found her body lying there on the floor, so I got out of there fast. And what about the man whose voice you heard? As far as I know, he might have been hiding in the next room. Why didn't you go to the police? I'd have been a dead pigeon if I'd gone to the police. So your only connection with Anna Ray was a personal one? That's right. Who do you think killed her, then? Some guy she was playing around with, I guess. It's a lie. Your whole story's a lie. You liked her yourself, didn't you, Foster? It's probably Fitzgerald. Go and let him in. All right, Nick, go ahead. You're going to love this. Oh, am I pulling it too tight, Mr. Desmond? I'll do the talking. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. Well, Foster. Nick, Sam, this is Mr. Fitzgerald from the committee. So this is Desmond. Battered but unbowed, eh, Desmond? Why don't you speak up and spare us all this unpleasantness? Perhaps you'd like to do the questioning yourself. I wouldn't dream of interfering. Go right ahead. Sam. Where's the contact list, Desmond? I don't know what you're talking about. Where's the contact list? <clears throat> I don't know what you mean. I haven't seen any list. You're being a bit medieval, aren't you, Foster? If it offends you, perhaps you'd care to wait outside. Ooh, break every bone in his body, if you like. But get results. Where's the contact list? I don't know. Where's the contact list? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Where's the contact list? I don't know. Where's the contact list? I don't know. I don't know. I... <laughs> He's out again. He's tough, all right. Or else he don't know the answers. He knows. I don't agree. I think you're being stupid, Foster. This isn't the sort of man to hold out against torture. He knows, I tell you. You still think that he's an American treasury man, I suppose. What else could he be? Whatever he is, you'll not give it out of him whilst he's unconscious. He's coming round, sir. Desmond, I'm going to give you one last chance. What have you done with the duplicate of this list? List? Is that what you mean by list? Give me a drink and I'll tell you what I know about it. Give him a drink. Nick, untie. Now then, Desmond. Suppose I can get you this list back. What happens to me? He'll be all right.
Now then. Well, I know where it is, but I haven't got it. I work for the United States government, Treasury Department. What branch of the Treasury Department? I'm not a regular, just special jobs. They told me to watch Anna Ray and get acquainted. I told you how I picked her up, Foster. I'm good at that sort of stuff. I wish it was a full-time job. Where's the list now? I turned it into the department. Who's your boss there? What's his name? There's no point in asking me questions about the department. I told you I'm not a regular. You must identify one of your colleagues from the department. It's Gerald's one. Real name's O'Brien, undercover man for the Treasury. Sorry, pal. Oh, that's very clever of you, Desmond. But not quite clever enough. You must think Foster's a complete fool if he's going to believe. Well... You'd like to believe it, wouldn't you, Foster? You resent my interference, don't you? When you threaten me, you threaten the committee. I'll report this. I think perhaps you and I had better have a little talk. Nick, take Desmond to his room and come back. Sorry, O'Brien. Thanks for trying to help me. Stop him! Don't be frightened, ma'am. I'm quite human. It's a man! Hold on, Annabella. I'm coming. I guess I must have fallen asleep. See, I, I had an accident. I came in here to rest up. I felt a little rocky. A foreigner. Send for the police. He said he's had an accident. What sort of an accident? A uh, speeding car. You know, dark road, pedestrian. I was a pedestrian. Annabella. Hold the police. Poor man, he looks hungry. What are you, an American? Well, yes, ma'am, I'm a poet. A poet? Oh, Mary, he must be starving. 
Oh, and I don't want to cause either one of you young ladies any trouble, but... You won't. If you don't mind telling me how to get to the nearest village, I'll just go get myself a little medical attention. Oh, dear, he's hurt his arm. Oh, bring him into the cottage. We'll fix him up there. Oh, if you, if you feel weak, you can lean on me. Thank you, ma'am. Kind hearts are more than cornets. Oh, that's nice. I love poets. And simple faith than Norman blood. When did you write that? This morning. Mr. Macaulay. What's going on in this office? Going on? Where's Desmond? Oh, well, he's out at the moment. Yes, I had a cable from the head office this morning. I'll read it to you. Investigate London immediately. Results from Desmond totally inadequate. What's he playing at? Can you tell me? Well, I must admit, I, I'm a bit worried about him. <laughs> You're worried? Well, you see, uh... Yes? Desmond, he, he's... Yes? He's suffering from, um, amnesia. He's what? Uh, loss of memory. Are you serious? Well, I wouldn't joke about a thing like this. Well, what are you doing about it? Well, I'm trying to look for him. You're trying to look for him? What, with nine million people in London and you're trying to look for one of them? Please do not shout. Uh, have you uh, notified the police? No. You should, you know. It's the usual thing to do when people are missing, to notify the police. Well, well Desmond said, on no account must I do that. He would come around the matter of hours. Oh, he did, did he? Well, you see, if the police found him, he might have a terrible shock. Do you realize anything could happen to him while his mind's a blank? Well, you see, it, A man it, suffering from amnesia has no right to be holding down a responsible job. I want to explain to you... Give me Scotland Yard. Please. You girls have a telephone I can use? There's one in the village. How far is that? About two miles. Why, are you in a hurry? Uh, well, yes, ma'am, I am. I... Do you mind if I take one of these? Well, help yourself. You will take two. There's some men coming here to ask about me. Whatever you do, don't tell them I'm here. Well, who are they? Well, I'll tell you about it later. Now, please, ma'am. Oh, dear. Now, shut up, Annabella. Go and hide in the pantry. And keep your hands off those jam tarts. They're for Sunday. Shut up. Oh, good morning. I'm looking for a young man. Oh, yes. He's an American. Oh. Uh, probably in rather a disheveled state. Oh, well, we haven't seen him. Definitely. Have we, love? Oh. Oh. Are you sure? Oh, quite sure. Well, I mean, you can see there's nobody here. Yes. It's rather strange because... Oh, well. Thank you very much. I'm sorry to have troubled you. Oh, you're welcome. I say. Yes? Who is this man you're looking for? We're from the Red Hill Mental Hospital, madam. He's a patient of ours. He escaped last night. What? <laughs> That was a close one. I'm, I'm sorry I got a little rough. Oh, it's all right. Oh, now look, you don't really think that... Well, that man isn't from a hospital. He's the head of a gang who's trying to kidnap me. I know it sounds a little crazy, but... Yes, yes it does. Oh, no, it doesn't. Oh. You finish your coffee. Oh, forget it. Just tell me where I can get a train for London. Well... There's a station about two miles down the road. Thank you. Oh, if you know that... This is John. Listen, a lot's happened. I think I'm on to something. Are you all right? Yeah, fine. Do you remember that diary of Anna's? 
Yes. Have you still got it? It's in the safe. Well, look, I want you to bring it to me. Where's the best place to meet away from the office? Well, where are you now? Well, I'm at a place called Maryfields. Hello? Hello? You still there? Yes. Well, I imagine the best place would be, um, Cannon Street Station, main entrance, in half an hour. Half an hour. That'll be 12.30. Okay, be sure you're not followed. Is this right for Cannon Street Station? Uh, there'll be a train in three minutes, sir. On this side. Thanks. It seems, therefore, that um, Desmond's um, suspected amnesia is responsible for his um, extraordinary behavior. Um, paragraph. Naturally, I'm doing everything that is human. Uh, you may rest assured that the work here in the London office will uh, be proceeded with to your entire satisfaction. Yours sincerely, uh, no, yours obediently, and so forth and so forth. You got that? Yes, thank you. All right, I want that off right away. What time is it? 12.18. Oh, I must go. I'm late for an appointment already. Will you be back before lunch? Not until 3. Oh, did I startle you? Regarding that letter, will you sign it for me and send it off for express airmail? I do want it to go in the next post. Yes, I I'll do that right away.
I'm a police officer. Can you show anything to identify yourself? Well, how do I know you're a police officer? Just a moment, sir. Does this mean anything to you? We're only trying to help you, sir. That's all. There's nothing to be ashamed of, sir. Ashamed? Why, this is Cases like yours crop up every day of the week. Just a few days rest in the hospital and Bob's your uncle. In the hospital? Well, I'm meeting this young lady right over there. He said, we'll have you tucked in bed as snug as a bug. Come on, Consul. Let's give him a hand. Now, Mr. Desmond, the police report suggests your memory extends back only to midday when they picked you up. That's right, Doc. As far as I know, this is the first bed I ever slept in. Yes, you had a good sleep this afternoon. Did you dream at all? Dream? We can usually interpret something from dreams that help the case. Yeah? Yes. Well, I guess I did dream a little. Uh -huh. Tell me about it. Well, I, I, I dreamed I, I was going up this big stone staircase till I came to a garden of cucumbers. Cucumbers? Yeah, big ones. And they kept growing bigger and bigger all the time until finally I, I knew I was back in Burbank, California. Only it couldn't have been Burbank because I remember a train trip where I had to keep changing trains all the time to Foster Long... I, I mean, Jamaica, Long Island. You and said the, Foster. What does that name mean to you? Nothing, nothing at all. It was Jamaica. And then I went into... In your sleep, you were calling out the name Foster in great fear. Nurse's report. Look, the name means nothing to All me. right, all right, Mr. Desmond. I'll be in to see you later. Meantime, there's no need to worry about Foster. Doctor, this is Miss Claymore, Mr. McCauley, from Mr. Desmond's office. Good afternoon. How is he, Doctor? Well, his condition isn't necessarily serious, but it is complicated by delusions of persecution. Persecution? You mean his mind's a bit... Nothing uh... definite yet. We're keeping him here under observation. May we see him now? Yes, I should think so. Thank you, Doctor. His reaction to familiar faces might be helpful. Not longer than ten minutes. Don't go very far from here, would you? No, no Doctor. Miss Claymore, Mr. McCauley. Well, Desmond, you're a fine fellow. What are you Who doing? Are you? I beg your pardon. Who are you? Don't you remember me? Never saw you before in my life. What name did the nurse say? Macaulay. Nice to know you, Miss Macaulay. No, I'm Jane Claymore. This is Mr. Macaulay. Oh. Now, Desmond, just try and concentrate. Remember, we're your friends. You've been very ill, but you're going to be all right. Thanks very much. You're in good hands, and with a bit of luck, we'll have you out of here in a month. That's fine. Now, don't worry about a thing. Okay. I don't like this guy. See here, Desmond. Get out. Desmond? Get out, or I'll throw you out. I'm not used to being... Out! Why? <laughs> Come along, Jane. You better come with me. No, 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 no. I can put up with her. It's just you. Me? Something to do with your face. My face? He'll be all right. I'll talk to him for a few minutes. Well, I'll be just outside if you need me. All right. Never. Stay right where you are, Miss Claymore. I'm not going to bite you, much as I'd like to. <laughs> you villain. You certainly had me fooled, I'll tell you that much. Whoever had this idea, it's great. Gives me a chance to do a little figuring without being interrupted. Almost convinced me that it wasn't my idea. Yours? Yes, I tried to straighten things out with Macaulay. Mm. Never thought he'd go to the police. That guy gets in my hair. What's he doing back here? Orders from head office. Oh, boy, am I hot. You got the diary? Yes. And this thing almost cost me my reputation. Well, if I know anything, it's going to cost a few people theirs, including Anna Ray. Yeah, my jacket's right over there. There's a copy of Virgil in the left-hand pocket. Virgil? Where did you get that? Bookstore. Remember this code we looked at, the diary? Well, the key's in this. See, Anna had a copy, so did Foster. I had a hunch, but I needed the diary to really figure it out. Got a pencil? Yes. You see, Anna worked for some international gang. A man by the name of Foster's ahead of it in this country. What kind of a gang? Well, their main interest is counterfeit money. It all goes back to the dollar shortage. That much I got from the diary. I figured this code will give me a contact list of their agents. To you. He practically tossed me out. Did he recognize you? I don't believe so. Is Miss Claymore still in there? Probably, if he hasn't thrown her out of the window. Everything all right? Uh, yes, thank you. Now, Mr. Desmond, do try and relax. Just imagine you're in the heart of New York. Oh, that's a great place to relax in. Now. 
first Latin word in the passage that Anna marked in her copy of Virgil is called a curare. And these are the first numbers in the diary. 26, 26, 26, 18, 26, 25. Now, the trick is to take the first Latin letter, C, and go round the circle, 26 letters. Now, that brings you back to C. That means that every time the, the number 26 is used, the Latin and the English letters are exactly the same. So that's C-O-N-T, I-18, around 18 from I, 16, 17, 18, A. C-26, that's C again. U, 25, 25 around from U is T, contact. I knew it. You see, you can only break this code if you know the particular Latin passage they use as a key. Ought to be a cinch now. Just need a few more hours to work it out. But what does it all mean? Well, I figure they've got agents at almost all the big European capitals. London, Berlin, Paris. And this gives me names and methods of contact. And if I can break it, I've got something to show to the police. Well, why don't we take it to the police now? Well, let's wait and see how it adds up. Well, the longer you wait, the worse it'll be. Well, I have to take the chance. I've still got Anna to explain. If this code shows up dynamite, they'll see how important it was for her to pull a gun on me. If it doesn't, well, I guess I'll have to go through with it anyway. Got a tiger by the tail. Can't let go. I'll phone you tonight at the office. He's much better, nurse. Uh, he knows me now. Well, I'm glad he knows you. I think the guy's shamming. I don't believe he's any more suffering from amnesia than I am. Mac. Well? I can't tell you at the moment, but there is an explanation. Look, I've got to be back in Paris by midday tomorrow, and I want to know what this is all about before I go. Desmond, I have some very good news for you. Your brother has been in touch with me. My brother? Yes, and he's arranged for you to be moved from here to a private sanatorium under the care of your old physician. What are you talking about? I haven't got a brother, I haven't got a doctor. Now, we all know you don't remember things, Mr. Desmond. We just want to get you dressed. Now, don't worry. Have you both gone crazy? I tell you, I haven't got a brother. I'm all right now. I feel fine. Remember everything. Yes, of course you do. But you don't remember your doctor and your brother, do you? Now, get your clothes on as a good chap. Yes, now, let me help you. Don't keep away. I'm going to stay right here. I haven't got a brother. I haven't got a doctor. And my memory's as good as yours. Perhaps you'd better come in, Dr. Wainwright. Ah, oh, my dear John, you remember me? You bet I do. He isn't a doctor. He's a criminal who's trying to kidnap me. You see, Dr. Scott, a very advanced case. Tell me, um, how long has he been like this? Well, apart from his amnesia, he's been fairly normal. Except for imaginary fears about someone called Foster. Foster? Delusions again, poor chap. Hmm. He's Foster. Don't let yourself be taken in by this man. I tell you, he's a criminal. I assure you, Desmond, Dr. Wainwright is a very distinguished physician. I have here a recommendation from Dr. Jameson, one of the directors of this hospital. That letter's a forgery. Oh, it's no use behaving like this, Desmond. It's purely a waste of time. Keep away from me! Hypodermic, all right, Doctor? Yes. Get the serum out of my bag, please. No! for you, Doctor. No, it won't be necessary. I've got my own downstairs. Nurse, get his clothes ready, please. City 1298, please. City Hospital Information. Hello? I want to inquire about a patient, uh, John Desmond, room 618. John Desmond, one moment, please. Hello? Yes, hello. John Desmond is no longer a patient at this hospital. No longer? But when did he leave? I can't give you that information over the telephone. Well, I'm a secretary, Miss Claymore. I've been worried this evening. For any further information? Will you please?
please. For any further information... Will you please listen to me? For any further information... Well, you idiot, will you stop saying that? Where's the contact list? Where's the contact list now? Where have you hidden it? Where have you hidden it? I threw it away. Perhaps you'd like me to question your charming secretary, Miss Claymore. She doesn't know anything about this. If you don't tell me where you've hidden the duplicate list, she'll learn a lot of unpleasant things, I promise you. My boys have just picked her up. I've only got to lift the telephone to get them started, Desmond. Or perhaps you'd rather wait until you see her. No, let her go. If you don't tell me now, Desmond, it'll be too late. I'm waiting. I hid it in my mattress at the hospital. Thank you. I hope for both your six, you're speaking the truth. I've got it at the hospital. I'm going to get it. Now, let's see, it's 20 minutes past nine. Oh, don't be so childish. Now, get this into your thick head. Wait till half past ten. I'll set the alarm. If I'm not back by then, you'll know that I've got the list. Yes, sir. And you'll know what to do. Yes, sir. And if anybody should question you later on, you can say that you did it while he was trying to escape. Who's going to question me, sir? The committee. The committee? Uh, yes, they're not satisfied that Desmond killed Fitzgerald. You do as you're told, Nick. You'll be all right. Just relax, Mr. Desmond. Your time is coming. You killed Sam, remember? Sam got run over. You knocked him under a train, didn't you? I'm glad. He was always bossing me around or playing up the Foster. He had it coming. I know Foster lies to the committee. <laughs> he told him you killed Fitzgerald. Yeah, he's always lying to him. Well, they'll find out about him if anything happens to me. Stay there. Why should the committee worry what happens to you? Why? Why do you think Fitzgerald tried to stop you from breaking my arm? I've got a friend on the committee besides him. This one's more valuable to me. He's alive. I can't touch Foster. No one can touch him. He's going to have you killed when he gets the book back. Well, when the committee finds out about that and how Fitzgerald really died, someone else will be killed. <laughs> Not Foster. I know. It'll be someone else. What are you trying to do, scare me? You're the one that's going to get killed. You, when the alarm goes off at 10.30. Remember that, 10.30. That's what Foster said. 10.30. Someone else. There you are, Miss Claymore. If you'll just sign that receipt, the books are yours. Thank you. The mattress was on the way to the repair shop. Once it had been mended, it had been almost impossible to identify it. Thank you. Thank you. I, I can't tell you how grateful I am. Oh, not at all. Well, excuse me. Hello? Yes? Oh, put him on. Hello? Dr. Wainwright? Yes, Doctor. We found them. I'm handing them over to Miss Claymore right now. Oh, she's gone. And she's taken the books with her. If you'll hold on a moment, I'll see if I can get her back. It's all right, Nurse Brady. I'm quite sure she'll bring them straight back to me. Thank you. Goodbye. There she is. Get after her.
The committee may question you. I have a friend on the committee. The committee may question you. Someone else will be killed. Do as you're told. Someone else will be killed. By your feet. Get on your feet! All right, Tuskett, take her upstairs. Your office, boss? Yes, I'll be with you in a few moments. All of you, very still, everybody. John! Tell him to let her go, Foster. Now! Get out of here, Jane. But I want to... Get out! But Foster has the diary. Okay, I'll take care of it. Now move, run! The time's running out. Let's have the list, Foster. All right, Desmond. You're too smart for me. You've been too smart for me all along, haven't you? Always just one jump ahead. Yeah? You're in control, but it's what you call a Mexican standoff, isn't it? Neither of us can make a move. What are you trying to pull? Contact the Grey Jaguar SFD329. Heading east, Long Bros Road. Over and out. Headquarters to car in 17. Contact Jaguar and detain occupants.
Desmond in that car? No. Where is he? Where is he? Warehouse. OK, let's go. It's John Desmond. Call an ambulance. I wish there'd been time to know, Jane. Isn't it a pity about things like that? If I dated her that night instead of Anna, if... if only... Isn't it a pity? It's all right, darling. Everything's going to be all right. Now. All right, Jasmine. Take it easy. You'll be fine. 